Good morning. Good morning. We're gonna go live in just a minute. Good morning, Monroe. Great. Good morning, Hi, Mom. Good morning, Andrew. Good morning, Alyssa. This song is called "I Will Always Love My Mama." It's by the Intruders. I don't know if you can hear it. Morning, Faith. I like that song because we're always going to love our mamas. Friends, good morning. I see some people checking in. I'm so excited. Awesome. Just going to write your days down here, your name. Excuse me. I have Andrew Monroe. His brother Gray is here too. Thank you, Alyssa. Faith is here. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Jameson. Good morning, Jameson. Stephanie. Good morning, Mia. Stephanie has been sending me videos of her actually reading her high frequency words. And she is doing a great job. That might be something some of you might want to do just of the list that's on your homework for the week. Or if you feel like you can do it, which I know some of you can, that would be a good practice. From the list, read them. So Stephanie, you might want to try to read the whole list that I sent a copy to mom. And I'm trying to find it because I have my calendar out. Sorry. This list. So you might want to try to read this one to me. That would show me that you were able to do them. That would be excellent. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Thank you, Andrew's mom. Okay, it looks like we have six friends on here so far. Yes, we do. Awesome. I'm just giving a few minutes. Um, we have a few things we're going to do today. And then I have some announcements, um, things I need to remember to tell you, uh, things you don't want to miss out on. Um, thank you, those, as I've always said, who have given me their address. If you haven't given me it, it yet, I will be totally going over that by tomorrow um, because I'm coming next week. You're going to get a special surprise, everybody. A special, because we deserve specials. So Jameson doesn't know what those are. Maybe Faith doesn't know yet either. So sometimes we were just really great and just, we were just great during the day. And we deserved a special. So before the boys and girls would go home, I would give them something in their hand. It was a special. Good morning, Eric. Good morning, Bernice. So we haven't had a special. Jameson and Faith, we haven't had a special in a long time. Uh, good morning, Jose. Jose is good to you. We just started. Uh, I was telling the friends that be sure I have your address because I'm coming to bring you a special. It might be special. Um, but I said we deserve it. So I will be um, coming. I'll talk to you before that. We'll see each other again on Tuesday. But I will be masked. Um, if you're there, great. Um, you'll, you'll, maybe I'll pick up, blow my whistle outside so you'll know I'm there. Um, we'll take a fast selfie if we can, distance. Um, and then I'm going to leave you a special, some good stuff, things that will help you also get ready, a little practice for first grade. Um, I'm just checking to make sure who's here. I have Andrew, good morning. Alyssa, good morning. Monroe. And his brother Gray are here. Thank you. Um, Faith is here. Thank you. Jameson is here. Stephanie is here. Eric Fuentes is here. Thank you. Bernice, glad you're here. And Jose is here. Awesome. Now, 
we're going to do um, a little sound, a little story for sure. And um, we're going to go over our vocabulary for the week. And um, if we have time, um, we're going to do math. But if we have time, our uh, writing. Um, those of you that were sending me your writing, thank you for doing that. A lot of you are really paying attention to your picture, showing me who's in the picture, where are they at, and what are they doing. So thank you for doing that. Sorry. The only people I'm in class. Sorry. Friends, also, when you're doing your writing, please remember to space your words. And we do not write words with capital and lowercase letters. So, for example, when you are writing, when you are writing, friends, just a little reminder, we don't mix capital, big letters, and lowercase letters. Okay? I don't want to see this. I like the. That is so not right, friends. And this is something that we kind of didn't get to do, but you will start seeing the correction or editing marks. Something we started. I like the. We know this one. It means you need some what? Oh, I'm sorry. Because that's blue kind of looks like green on the screen. I don't like red to correct. I don't like it. So I'm going to move this a little bit. Sorry about that. This, is that even better? Yeah, kind of. It's purple. This is telling you you need space. I is okay. Like doesn't need this capital letter. You might see a little mark like that. This is what teachers do. They give it to you like that. So you need a little space, like this is you if you had to recopy it again. The K and the E are okay. I like the. You see something wrong with the? No big T. Teacher might cross it out and tell you, hey, make it um, smaller or lowercase. H is okay. E needs to be. These are your other editing or correction marks that teachers will be doing in first grade. You might talk more about that next week so you can see. I like the lowercase t, lowercase h was okay, and a lowercase e. So then you see the sentence, you put the space, you don't have to draw the line again, that's just teacher telling you to fix it. I like the ball, I like the flower. Why? Oh, it's beautiful, it has beautiful colors. I like the game. It was so much fun. I heard a lot of you tell me about things that um, you like to do, places you've gone. We're going to be talking about that next week, somewhere you'd like to go, a place you'd like to go. Does anybody know where Miss Ayala likes to go? I get on a plane. I go stay with who? Teresa. Teresa, moms and dads, some of you don't know, um, my boys and girls know, has been my longest friend. We grew up on the street together, my street on La Rica, where I grew up. Um, she's been my longest friend, and uh, we went to kindergarten together. So she's been my longest friend, like I said, and I go stay Thanksgiving and during the summer a little bit with her. And she came out to California, and I went to Disneyland with her. In New Mexico, that's right, Monroe. You remember Dominic. Dominic is here. Thank you. Correction marks in our writing, but we're gonna talk about that because that's what teacher's gonna give you um, probably next year to help you. Um, you know how we go over the writing? Teacher will give it to you, like, you know, and then she'll have you go back and fix it, okay? Uh, thank you, Dominic, for being here. I'm just making sure he's here. Yes, thank you, Monroe, for remembering New Mexico. That's so right. So friends, we are, um, we have some vocabulary words this week. Now, 
moms and dads might be saying, what are those? Um, every week what we're doing, and I always have it on the board, and I think I talked about it last week. Whatever lesson we were doing, I would always say letter, word, and then we would have something that said vocabulary. This was always on the board. So whatever letter we were learning this week, I would write it there. Whatever word we were learning as our high frequency word was on there. And then I would, as we learned the vocabulary, we would learn two a day. And then on Wednesday, remember friends with the oral vocabulary cards, with the big picture cards, we would learn the other three and we would kind of um, learn those extra vocabulary words. And that was something I remember talking to all of you moms and dads at the, um, I talked about it with you at the conference. Emma's here. Hey, Emma. We were just showing some correction marks. We'll talk about that next week. And I'm talking about our letter and vocabulary for the week. I'm just coming back here really quick to write Emma so I do not forget. Emma. Thank you, Emma. Andrew is here. Monroe is here. And Gray. Alyssa, Faith, Jameson, Stephanie, Eric, Bernice, Jose, Dominic, and Emma. That's awesome, friends. We have about half our class is on here. Christopher is here. Yay, Chris. Talking about some editing or correction marks. We're going to talk about it um, next week, Tuesday. If you haven't given me, Lucas is here. It, that's okay. Late, no, you are fine. Lucas, glad you're here. Thank you, those who were sending me um, your pictures. Good morning. Good morning, Miha, uh, to Lucas's mom. Um, do you know what's so funny? Some of your moms and dads went to Walnut School. Not just one or you or two of you, a lot of you. And so I've known your moms and dads when they were little. So you might hear me call your mom or dad Mia or, or Mia. Um, so we were talking about editing marks because some of us are still using capital letters or not doing spacing. We're going to start to use these correction marks because that's something that in first grade, you're going to start to see friends and teachers going to have you go back and fix it because of the marks. You don't have to, re you, well, you would know them in your head, but they'll have them up on a poster or something too. Like what they use. This is most common. We know what that line means. We need some space. We made that. And then we also have to, some of the capital letters, we had to make them lowercase. Those are the first two. We'll see those. We'll do see those next week. Um, if I haven't had your address yet, friends, please be sure you give it to me because I'm coming to see you. <laughs> I'm going to bring you surprises. That's more than one. Okay. I'll let you know. I hope you're there when I see you. You'll know. I'll keep my distance. You'll know because I'll have a mask and I'll be blowing my whistle. So you know I'm outside. I'll let you know. So on our board, we always have the letter, word, and vocabulary for the week. So we're going to do our vocabulary for this week. Now, um, I want to thank Mrs. Macias because I went in her class one time and I went, I like the idea. Then they know what they're doing. And this is part of our, our schedule. We'd always draw our schedule up here. So our letter this week is actually long I sound. Miss Ayala went ahead and gave me the long O for next week because I was doing those plans, which is fine because now you guys know. So we're talking about I, letter E, long I. And this is the way they show long I, friends. They put a little I and they put a line on top. That's telling me, well, that made no sense. Sorry. That's telling me that's a long I sound. And I'll show you on the chart. Our words this week, friends, we have two words this week in our lesson that we're talking about Peter's chair. Uh, we talked last week. Um, our two words this week are has and play. Has and play. Has and play. These are our two words. Now we come to our vocabulary. And usually, friends, we would have that with a um, picture card. But we're going to try to do them together. 
and we're going to try to act it out. So we need to know those words. Now, our, we're going to go over our long letter I in a minute. But our first word, very important word, friends, and our story this week is Hen Hears Gossip. Hen Hears Gossip. Hen, we know, is the mama, the mama to the chickens. The rooster is the dad. The hen is the one that lays the eggs they hatch. But the hen hears some gossip. And I'm going to look for that story on our YouTube, and I'm going to link it here. Hen hears gossip. Now, the problem with hen is she lives on the farm, and she hears some gossip. Gossip is like what people are saying, saying words about other people. Nobody told hen this story. She kind of heard it. And then she goes to say it to somebody else. And then they go and say it to somebody else. But did Hen even really, did they even really tell Hen the information of the story? No, it's gossip. Gossip is not a true story. You're not, well, it, it wasn't told to you. So friends, Hen hears this gossip, this little story, and then she goes to tell every, all the other animals. And now all the other animals are thinking it's true, okay? It's not. So that's not a very good thing. We don't talk about other people. We try not to talk about other people, friends, because that's not being a good friend. That's actually, our first word goes along with this. Our first word is citizen. 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 And a citizen, friends, is somebody that belongs to a group or to a place where you live. So you could be a citizen of the United States of America because you were born here. Maybe some of you or your family were born in Mexico. Maybe they're a citizen of Mexico, but they live here. Or maybe they, like my mama, he grew up way down here in a country in Central America called Nicaragua. So Nicaragua, yeah, it's under Mexico. My dad's, my grandparents are from Mexico. My dad was from here. So I'm part Nicaraguan and I'm part Mexican. But my mom, when she came to the United States of America a long time ago, before when she was younger than me, long ago, she came to study, to go to college and school. So she, boys and girls became a citizen of the United States of America. Yes, she went to school at night. She was already a mom. We were already big. I was in college at LMU, and she would go with my dad. He would take her and because she wanted to be a citizen of the United States of America. When you belong to a country or our state or our city, you are a citizen and you have rights. So our citizen, to be a citizen of the United States, you can run for office, elected office, like Miss Ayala did. And being a citizen, I was able to vote or pick who I wanted to, to win um, for mayor, uh, for the council, for myself, for city council, uh, city clerk. Also, the state, we have a governor for the United States of America. We have presidents. And sometimes it's kind of like voting, friends, you know, voting. We that before. So whoever has the most wins. So being a citizen, friends is being kind of like having rights. You know, you have rights and you can do things, but you also are a good friend. Um, being a good citizen is being helpful, especially at this time, friends. We have so many people. I'm just talking about Baldwin Park. We have so many people who are being good citizens. They are being helpful. They are being kind. You know, last week, Friday, I went out to Morgan Park and I was covered and I had distance with everybody, but we were there with another great person called Supervisor Hilda Solis and she and all of these volunteers, that means they, you know, they work for free. Uh, we've talked about volunteering. They were giving out food to all kinds of people. Maybe some of you had heard about it. Maybe even some of you had known about it or were in there, but they, they that was being a good citizen. Our other word friends that we have is called, oh no, sorry.
is called hauled. Hauled. And haul, let's spell like this, is not like your hallway. It means to kind of like pull something. So they hauled it. They hauled it. Sometimes if you have like a lot of um, trash or you're cleaning out your garage or your house and you put it all in a truck or even when we leave our trash cans outside for waste management and they come by, they hauled the trash away. So they're getting it and they're hauling it. So our first word we know is citizen. So being a good citizen is being proud. That's good. You know, you're being a good citizen. We remember all our symbols of being a, a, of the United States of America. So we're being a good citizen, being responsible and respectful. So good citizen. Our next word is hauled. You hauled it. You're hauling it. You're taking it away. Our next word is necessary. 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 Think about it. What does it mean if it's necessary? Necessary. It's a big word. Necessary. 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 You've got to do it. You've got to have it. It's not an option. It's necessary. You got to have it. Look at me. Necessary. Our first word, citizen. Our second word, hauled. Our third word, necessary. What is necessary to be living? We know water. We've got to have water. We talked to Mr. Uh, Vargas about that when he came from the Valley County Water District. Our director, Javier Vargas, came and read to us um, about the water. Remember, it's necessary. Our body needs it. Is it necessary for Miss Ayala to have her French fries? No. Is it necessary that I have my coffee every day? No. But we need water. We need something in our body. Do we need food? Yes, it's necessary. It's something you need. It's a need. So a necessary is something you need. Do you really, do you really need, do you really need those games on your game system? No. It's great to have. I'm not saying you shouldn't have it, but it's not necessary. Do we have to do we have to log into this every day? Yes. Oh, thank you. They said necessary means it's important. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Andrew and his mom. Yes, being if it's necessary, it's important. You've got to have it. Okay? You've got to come on here. It's necessary to come on here. Okay? Because you have to hear what I'm saying. Moms and dads need to hear what I'm saying. I try to give um, important information. I try to tell you what's necessary for you to do um, and, and things like that. Is it necessary for, is it necessary that you send me your work in? Yes. Yes, moms and dads, it's very important because now we're coming down to the end where the district and Mrs. Pedignina are telling me exactly what I'm looking for. So the check-ins are important. The showing of work, I have saved everything. You have texted and videotaped me, dated. I have it on my, um, for those of you that are just emailing me um, and see this later on, I, I'm saving everything because I have to mark it. You have to be diligent, okay, on that. If you videotape yourself, like I said, our friend Stephanie reads those words. Hey, if you videotape me, if you videotape yourself reading those high frequencies, you're showing me that you know it. Or in, in next week for math, we're going to be going on with, with the number counting and stuff. If you start and you're showing me that you're counting, you're showing me evidence. That's what I need to see. Okay, remember, moms and dads aren't doing the work. You are. So our first word, citizen. We're part of our country. We're part of our community. We're part of our uh, city. Hauled. You're hauling it. You're bringing it over. Good job. Necessary. It's necessary. It's important. It's important. Boys and girls, is it necessary that we go outside? Yes. I don't want you to be inside all day. Just because we cannot be with other people or near them doesn't mean we can't go outside and run around and play. You guys have shown me great things on your hoverboards, on your skateboards, outside doing art, painting, 
uh, coloring, all of that cool stuff. Jump roping, basketball. Some of you have written all that. I would love to see you doing it. I would love to see. And then even fun stuff. People were showing me they were cooking. Friends, I have not cooked so much. Can I tell you? <laughs> Miss Ayala doesn't. I, I cook, but I don't usually do it. So I've been having to do it. Our next word. We know this word. These are such good words for us. Respect. Respect. We know what that means. Respect. That means that what? We are being kind to not just ourselves, but to others. We are going to respect. We are going to be kind. We are going to respect our moms. We're going to respect our dads, our brothers, our sisters. That's their stuff. We don't touch it, just like in the class. Would you come over to Miss Ayala's table and touch her stuff? No, unless I asked you. Sure, we shared the room, but we need to respect people's things and people. And we are doing a great job. Friends, we were doing a great job keeping our, our space and our distance from each other, right? And not putting our hands on each other. And I know it's especially hard for me because all of you know, all of you know that I love to hug you and I love to, if you were sad, I would hug you. Um, I would always ask you, do you need a hug? And I would give it. I'm a hugger. Everybody knows that. Okay, moms, dads, they know that. After I teach your kid, I, I'll hug you. So, um, but we need to now keep that respect. We have to respect each other and keep that space, okay? And keep our hands from their things. So respect means that. You're going to be kind to one another. We're going to treat people the way they want to be treated and the way we want to be treated. So that goes part of being a good citizen. Let's be kind. Let's not be mean. Let's be nice. Okay? We're going to respect each other. We know that, friends. This is a good word for us. Hold. We're going to get stuff and move it on over. And necessary things that we have to have or do and that are important. And our last word is kind of a funny word. It's tidy. Tidy, not tied, not tied, not tied like the dish soap. I'm going to write it up here in black so it'll fit. Tidy means neat. Tidy, tidy means neat. So sometimes people will say, oh, she kept it so tidy. It was so neat. It's so tidy. My my, I'll tell you right now, friends. Just like my my counter where I would sit at the table, not tidy. I know where my stuff is. My floor is not tidy. Okay, I have little piles of work of you guys, so it's not tidy. Right here, I have my papers. I know what I have to do. It's not tidy. When we finish, I come by and I tidy it up. Okay, so tidy means to keep things clean and neat. Citizen. Being a part of a country, being a part of a community, um, and being a good citizen is so important. Do good citizens gossip and talk about each other? No, no. Hauled, and that's what happened with Hen in the story. Hauled, grab it, and move it on over. Hauled it. Necessary, something that is important or necessary. Thank you, Andrew, for telling me that, um, saying important. Respect. We're going to be kind and nice to each other because they're going to be kind and nice to us. There's something that you're going to learn in first grade called the golden rule. We've talked about it before, but it's called the golden rule. Um, it's just being great, friends. Let me tell you, everybody should do this and know this, especially now. You're going to treat people. You're going to act the way to people the way you want them to act to you. Okay? You're going to treat people the way you want them to treat you. If you don't want people to yell in your face, then you're not going to yell in their face and they won't yell at you, okay? I don't yell in your face. You don't yell in my face. We understand each other. I don't touch your things and then you guys won't touch mine. If you've noticed, if any of you remember moms and dads, this happened, you know, uh, maybe I thought something was in their backpack and I'd always ask the boys and girls, go get your backpack, check it out. I would never touch it. That's theirs. I don't touch things like that. I will ask them if it was necessary <clears throat> May I look in your backpack? And they would say yes or no. That's theirs. I'm going to respect their things. So friends, let's be respectful. Let's respect the people. If there's some people that don't want to come too close, some people wear a mask, 
we're going to respect that, especially at this time. Okay. If they don't want to hug you, we understand we're keeping the social distance. Okay. It's very difficult for Miss Ayala, but we will do it. So those are our vocabulary words, and we're going to see them in our story. It's called Hen Hears Gossip, and that's our big book story. So friends, after we finish our lesson here, I, I've been trying to link a book onto it. So if you go into back into this later, moms and dads, go right into the message where it says the message, like what we did that day. There's a YouTube link. The book is there. I put um, Peter's Chair. I put another story, Snowy Day by Ezra Jack Keats with Peter. You guys can see Peter. And I'm going to try to hook up Hen Hears Gossip. If I don't put Hen Hears Gossip, I'm going to put another story that I'm going to read right now, friends, that I'm going to read right now. Um, actually, in just a minute, I'm going to read a story and then we'll do a little math. Now, the reason I'm saying I'm going to do it real quick is because I want to quickly go over our long letter I. Sorry about that. Long letter O. Oh. Let me get it. Let me get our paper. We've been talking about the vowels. Now, Miss Ayala went on and did letter O, which is next week. But our vowels, we have five, remember? A, E, I, O, U. A, E, I, O, U. I know the vowels, too. I know the vowels, too. We have five vowels. We know they're necessary. They're in every English word. Even if it's just one of them, like A or I. You've got to have a vowel in your name. You've got vowels, okay? We're going to look for those. We're going to look for those in your name. Watch, watch. Um, we have sounds, two sounds for the vowels. The short sound is what's in your um, picture cards we always have. A, A, E, E, I, I, O, A, like an octopus. And you, uh, like an umbrella. Umbrella. The long sound is its name. A is A, like in cake. O is O, like in cone. E, E, like in C or tree or B. I, like in bike. like in bike, or the real word bicycle, but bike. And then you, like in cute. We're going to talk about the I. And when we're doing I, when we're talking about the long vowel I, and it has a line like that. That's how they show the difference in the teacher book, okay? The short vowel has like a little smile on it. That's just a teacher thing. The spelling we're going to use is uh, oh, maybe a letter in the front. I, letter E. Anybody have any words? Be sure to tell me. We have bike. We have ride. Er, I ride. D, d, d. Ride. With a quiet E at the end. This is the spelling that we're using to make the I sound. There's other spellings too. But this is the one we're learning with our long vowels right now. We have bike. We have ride. If any of you have any words, feel free to type them in there if you can. If you can. If you have any words in there. See, some people are texting me words. Another word, friends. Dime. That's a 10 cents. Dime. D D I copying the sound spelling. This is the way you spell it. D dime. M. Dime. Do you hear anything else? No. But you have to put the silent E. If you do not put it, it would be dim. So you have to put that silent E. Remember what we said about the vowels. When two vowels go walking, 
Number one does all the talking. When two vowels say, oh, excuse me, play a game, number one is saying his name. Number two is, here's a word you know, like. It's one of our words. L L I like. Ooh. It could be what? It could be a K, it could be a C, or it could be a CK. Like. It's a K, it's a K. Like. Do you hear anything else? No. So we're going to put the quiet E at the end. Beautiful. I'm getting a word right now. Look at that. You guys know it? A kite. Good one, Andrew. Andrew, good job. So we're going to sound it out. Could be a K, could be a C, or could be, we know it's not the beginning. We know it's not CK. And not start a word with CK, remember? We talked about that. It's actually a K. Thank you. He wrote that in there. K K I, the letter I, kite, t -t -t. the T, kite. Do you hear anything else? No. So it's a silent E. If you didn't put it, it would be Kit. I have a cousin named Kit. We call her Kit, but it's kite. That's why the silent E is so important. Let's read our words, friends. Following that long I sound, spelling it with I letter E. Bike, ride, dime, like, kite. We also have ice. We have line. We have five. We have pine. There are a lot of cool words using the long I sound. Did you use these for your list this week? Sure. When you draw a picture, because there's a circle map you're doing of the picture, you can use these words. You can use these words. Now, friends, we're going to do a little math review in a minute. But before that, I want to take a moment uh, for two things. I want to bring this over so I won't forget to acknowledge to say something about it. Um, but I want to read a story, and it's called Guess how much I love you. A couple of reasons I want to read this story. Number one, friends, because I love you very much. You guys know that, okay? Um, you can see how this rabbit is looking up at that rabbit. Loves that rabbit. And the other reason, friends, I don't want you to forget that. Okay, Miss Ayala is here for you all the time. You know that. Um, the other thing is I want to read this story is because they love each other, just like our mamas love us. Our mamas love us. Our mamas are helping you learn. They're teaching you at home. Some of your dads are helping us as well. So I want to thank them for that too. Friends, it's been a long, long time that um, we haven't been able to see each other. But I want you to know, even though I'm just maybe a few streets from you, really I am. Um, I, you know, I want you to know that you're not far from my thoughts or my thinking. But I'm gonna read this story especially for you and especially for our mamas, because guess how much we love them, right? Okay, it says, guess how much I love you. And moms and dads, I will link this story as well as if I can find the hand story to this YouTube right after we're done, okay? Guess how much I love you by Sam McBratney, illustrated by Anita Jaram. Guess how much I love you. Guess How Much I Love You, written by Sam McBratney, illustrated by Anita Jaram. Remember the writer and then the, or the author and the illustrator, the one that did the pictures. Little, little nut brown hair, and we're not talking about our hair. A hair is another word for rabbit, remember? Like bunny. Little nut brown hair who was going to bed held on tight to big nut brown hair is very long ears.
He wanted to be sure that big nut brown hair was listening. Guess, guess how much I love you, he said. Oh, I don't, I don't think I could guess that, said big nut brown hair. This much, said little nut brown hair, stretching out his arms as wide as they could go. That's awesome. Look at big nut brown hair. Big nut brown hair had even longer arms. But, but I love you this much, he said. Hmm. That's a lot, thought little nut brown hair. The big nut brown hair is a is a boy bunny because it says he, but I'm gonna change it to she because I'm a girl and so is mama. I love you as high as I can reach, said little nut brown hair. I reach up high. I love you as high as I can reach said Big Nut Brown Hair. That is very high, thought Little Nut Brown Hair. I wish, I wish I had arms like that. Beautiful pictures. Then Little Nut Brown Hair had a good idea. He tumbled upside down and he reached up the tree trunk with his feet. Some of us have done that in class. Did some of you do that? <laughs> I love you all the way up to my toes, he said. <gasps> Look at this. And I love you all the way up to your toes, said Big Nut Brown Hair, swinging him high over her head. I love you as high as I could hop, laughed little nut brown hair, bouncing up and down. But I love you as high as I could hop, smiled big nut brown hair. Wow, look at that. Smiled big nut brown hair as she hopped so high, her ears touched the branches above. That's good hopping, thought little nut brown hair. I wish I could hop like that. See how little nut brown hair is just looking at big nut brown hair like, wow. That's awesome, all the cool things big nut brown hair does. I love you all the way down the lane which is like a road, all the way down the lane, as far as the river, cried little nut brown hair. Wait, I love you that much. I love you across the river and over the hills, said big nut brown hair. That's very far thought little nut brown hair. He was almost too sleepy to think anymore. Then he looked beyond the thorn bushes out into the big dark night. Nothing, nothing could be farther than the sky. I love you right up to the moon. He said and closed his eyes. Oh, that's far, said Big Nut Brown Hair. That is very, very far to the moon. Wow. Big Nut Brown Hair settled Little Nut Brown Hair into his bed of leaves. She leaned over. And she kissed him good night.
And this is where we get that great saying we all say. Then he, she laid close, right down. I'm sorry, remember we said she. Then she laid down close by and whispered with a sigh. I love you right up to the moon. Yes. And I've heard that, boys and girls, a lot of people say, I love you to the moon and back. Miss Ayala always says, I love you more. So friends, some of us look at our mamas like, wow, they're doing that cool stuff. They make us dinner. They bring us things. Friends, even though this is new things for us, mommy being the teacher, dad being the teacher, teacher teaching on the computer, we can't see each other. Um, remember, remember how much we love you. Okay, I want you to remember that. And I'm going to link this book. It's an awesome book. I love you to the moon and back. Um, and he might even have another story. I might link on there. But I will link that onto the YouTube. So thank you for letting me share that with you, friends. I love that story. I'm glad I didn't cry. Um, and last but not least, friends, before we, we, we come off, if there's any questions, please feel free to ask them on here. A um, couple of things we need to talk about. Um, before I do the math, uh, the math, uh, we've been doing shapes, three-dimensional shapes. You've been showing me the shapes. You've been drawing me those shapes. Um, tomorrow I have a meeting, friends, and this is kind of important, parents. Tomorrow I have a meeting um, with uh, the staff, with Mrs. Pedignina. And besides me coming and doing some specials for you, that's just room one. My understanding, maybe, because others have been doing it, we might be having a little special surprise drive-by parade of Walnut teachers. If that's going to happen, <laughs> we might drive by your home or near your home. If that's going to happen, I'll be able to tell you more on Tuesday. Um, we would love to see you. I know we're doing a special um, project that I'll send out to you once it's done. I'll find out more tomorrow. Um, just know that we will meet back here on Tuesday. We will, excuse me, I will come by and see you. Do do my whistle. Bring you a special, some specials, some good things. And then um, I'll let you know more about the Walnut School surprise and all that stuff. If we do it, I'll definitely be a part of it. You will hear my whistle. Um, I might even bring some special guests with me, okay? But what we're going to do in math, and this is something we were talking about, the teachers and I, because, yes, we were doing addition word problems. Yes, we were doing subtraction, and we're going to continue to do those. But something else that's really important are your numbers. So on your numbers, friends, we might ask you to – Complete the numbers. We may not start just at one. So if you have a piece of paper, And I should have done it this way, but I did it this way instead. And that's okay. When you're writing numbers, you don't always have to start at one. Okay? You don't always have to start at one. We can today because we're practicing it. So you want them to be sure to do it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What would come, oh my gosh, sorry friends. What would come after that? 11, 12, so this front number is going to change now to a two and then a zero. 
What would be after 20? You can see, friends, the second number is the same. We've talked about that. We see that. And as we write more, we'll tell that. The first number took on this number right here. So this number right here, what's the first digit? Remember we said 20 has two digits. Digits are the place value or the number, so that is a two. So a two would be in the front, then one, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and then 30, and then 30. Now, moms and dads, we've talked about this before. When you're having them write numbers, stop. Do something else, then come back to it. When they come back to it, it could be in a binder like this or however you make the 10 squares. Whenever you're doing it, when they come back, let's continue. Okay. Count. Have them count them back for you. One, two, three, touching them. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, what's next? 31, oh, okay, so the next day you come back and you start doing 31, 32, 30, and you keep going. You don't do them all in one day. Try to do as many as you can. There's a little pattern going on. So there's three things going on, moms and dads. Number one, writing the numbers. Stop. Have them say them to you. That's it. Number two, they come back. They read where they're at. They're reading the numbers. Stop right there. You don't even have to keep going. Going. What's this number? What's this number? What's this number? What's this number? You could even, especially the ones to 20, if you feel that they're not getting the number, write it on a little card. One, two, three, up to 10, up to 20. We've talked about it. Mix them up. What's this number? What's this number? What's this number? The idea is they need to be able to ID that number. I'm telling you right now, moms and dads, I've been doing this a long time. When you do this, what's this number? In like this, and they see it, they're going to be doing this. Counting fast in their head till they get to 13, okay? I'm not even saying you have to make cards. Cut this off. Cut those little pieces. Use that little piece. Have them one to 10. Mix them up. They're cut up. Glue them in order or even lay them in order. They don't have to glue if you don't have glue. If you have them, if they, if they get those, do them up to the 20. Cut those out. You could reuse this stuff. Cut it. Mix them up once they need to know that number. Don't do them all at once. 10. Add some more. Add some more. There's different ways you can use this number for number memorizing or actually IDing it. Now, we're going to be talking about next week numbers 11 to 20. A little review, a little place value. You've got to look at it. You've got to show me that number. Okay, friends? So it's like writing that number, looking it out. We'll talk about it. Um, I told you about the place for the numbers, the place value. Also, friends, or moms and dads, another thing. You don't always have to start with one, okay? If you were writing numbers, if you were writing numbers, It could easily be done like this.
You could give them the paper like this and say, hey, we're going to write some numbers, but I want you to start with 11, not one, 11. So then Fran's going to write 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. What would be next? 21, 22, 23. And you would keep going. You don't always have to start with uh, with number one. Also, and I'm gonna color this off so you can see that I'm doing another one. We're not continuing. This is another example. That's an example right here. Hey, let's write our numbers today. Okay, on this ten frame because we know about ten frame. They know about the tens. Hmm. Let's start with five. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten is now in the middle. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. <gasps> with the one and the five. Remember the pattern because <gasps> it's a group of ten. 16. Well, this one must end with 7. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Remember what the second digit is. This one's going to end with a 2. 22. This one's going to end with a 3. 23. This one's going to end with a 4. 24. 24, 25. Some of you boys and girls know the numbers. This would be a fun way with the tens that you're writing them. But still, moms and dads, seeing the digit pattern, seeing that they, so your boys and girls see that it does end. This is a good way of checking what's got to end in a nine. Oh, it's got to end in a zero. You don't always have to start with the one. They've got to know the numbers. We could, and this is, let's start by 25. 26, 27, and now I'm doing it that way. That's the idea, friends, that they know the numbers. That they know the numbers, okay? Now, I'm just making sure I told everybody everything. Be sure I have your address, or you're going to get a, uh, well, you'll get a little video from me. Probably this week, especially after I find out the news about the walnut parade. And then, of course, you know, you guys are going to come see you on Tuesdays. It'll be after class. Okay. And you're like, Miss Ayala, I just want to make sure I have Andrew here. Monroe is here. Alyssa's here. I'm sorry, Gray is here also with Monroe. Alyssa, Faith, Jameson, Stephanie, Eric, Bernice, Jose, Dominic, Emma, Christopher. And Lucas, are there any questions? Any, any, any questions going on? Just wanting to see, um, are there any questions by anybody? Please do not hesitate to text me. Be sure you guys can show me that they're counting the numbers with the little video. You can have this, I see it and that's cool, but I wanna hear them. The words, um, also the writing, the reading of the words. Um, thank you, Stephanie, for doing that little video. She sends a quick little, like, you know, 10 seconds or whatever. We're reading the words. So thank you. And I like the way that you're doing that. I know that Santiago will probably come on here later. Um, I'm trying to think who else. Um, Ileana checks on it later after her mom's um, at work. So I want to say hi to everybody. I hope you enjoyed the story. I do want to say, um, especially... Um, to all our moms out there to have a wonderful, wonderful Mother's Day. Um, I'm so thankful and grateful for each one of you. You don't even know. Um, I know this has been not the, the ideal um, way that we wanted to do kindergarten, but I just want to thank everybody for really just coming together. I especially want to do a little shout out 
to my fellow uh, TK kindergarten teachers who are moms, uh, Mrs. Sargent, Mrs. Macias, uh, Mrs. Garcia, and uh, La Senora Molina, because uh, they've taken care of me, believe me. So uh, we're very fortunate to have the group that we have teaching your children. We love all your children, all of them. It doesn't matter what room they're in. So we're so thankful um, for that. And I want to wish all of you a happy Mother's Day. As my kids know, my littles know, uh, my mom's in heaven. So I just want a little shout out to my mom. Um, happy Mother's Day to everybody. Um, uh, I love all of you very much. You know that. And um, I hope to see you soon. Okay, little music. Little music for our mamas. Oh, I should have changed it, and I didn't. It's still, I always love it. I'll see you soon, everybody. Love you. to the books. <laughs>